body and uh, just uh, love this opportunity to come together and worship together and praise Jesus and thank him for all the wonderful things he's done. Starting out our call to worship, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Amen. That is a promise. And I've claimed that many times in my life. Many times uh, this week. <laughs> many times this week. <laughs> All right. Um, anybody who cares to stand may stand and join us. If you care to sit, we're going to, um, however <laughs> you want to do it, you are free <laughs> to stand or sit and worship as you like. And we're going to do some worship indeed. songs. <laughs>
that veil was torn we had that opportunity to go behind the veil and be in the presence of the almighty and um, that's what that song's about Jesus gave us the promise that if we believed in him all things were possible if we had the faith of a mustard seed we could make that mountain move what's your mountain what do you need to move that much faith that's what we're looking for this morning We're going to do one for the kids here, well, for the, the kid, <laughs> the kid. Well, well we kind of got, right. got two more up here, too. So, yeah. Those of us young at heart. I'm pretty sure the young kids are dancing at home right now. <laughs> And these 
And these are the days of Ezekiel The dry bones becoming as flesh And these are the days of your servant David Rebuilding a temple of praise And these are the days of the harvest The fields are as wide in your words And we are your laborers in your vineyard Declaring the word of the Lord Behold he comes Riding on the clouds Shining like the sun Let the trumpet go Lift your voice It's the year of Jubilee to do the modulation of or not so we did both <laughs> so we just honky tonked it all the way out <laughs> all right welcome welcome to surfside church i'd like to invite my little one to come up here do you want to come on up okay i'll step around to this side here for a minute all right, now, now I brought something with me. What That's you, for the floor with this your camping. For when you're camping? How does it work when you're camping? What do you do with it? You, you, you put the night on in case you have something by your tent, and then you just start to round your tent. Wow. And here I thought it was just like a mosquito killer, like if it's buzzing around your finger, and try to hit it like that. But maybe it attracts mosquitoes. Let's see. So if you need to see something, you turn it on like that, right? Yeah. Yep. And if you need more light, do you do it like that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then you can see everything. You know, it, it, the reason why I got this is one time I had to set up some stuff camping in the dark. And you know how hard it is to hold something in one hand like this and try to do something at the same time like this? Okay, yeah. Here we go. Do you, do you have part cat? <laughs> so it's good to have light whenever you're trying to work in the dark, right? You need to be able to see what's going on. So this is what this is for. So what I hope you remember is, ready? Come here. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, yeah, I don't need the flashy light. I start doing the flashy light, everyone starts falling out. See it? Don't turn it on right there. You'll never see anything for a couple of days. But yeah. You know, by, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the light of the world. And Jesus helps us to be able to do work and do things in dark places sometimes. And sometimes we have to sit here and actually think. I know, sometimes we have to think and pray and put the light of Christ on our own minds so that we can see what we're doing while we're working in the dark. You want to say something in there? Hi. Hi. <laughs> so... If you ever need to use these again when you're camping or something like that, right? 
remember when you see light that Jesus is the light of the world and he's actually there to help you whenever you're in places that seem really, really dark. All right. Even when you pray, it's like putting it on your head so that you can see and you still have your hands available to be able to move around. And one day, don't worry, you'll be able to read this. All those words will make sense one day. But in the meantime, you have people around you that are training you up in the way that you should go so that as you get older, you won't leave it. But sometimes if you want to try something different as you get older, guess what? It promises you'll come back. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for your love for us. And Jesus, thank you that you scoop up children in your lap and you bless them. Thank you that you're the light for the children and the adults as well. And watch over this little one and all the other little ones in the world, we pray. Amen. What do you think about that? Good. You can head back to your seat. You got the kids' message there. Yeah, I know. I'll try to make it extra interesting for the rest of it. What do you think? So, so a couple of announcements to touch on as we get ready to worship by our giving. Uh, one is that, yes, the young crew will be off on vacation. Most of the young crew is missing today because one of the young crew is trying to have a fever when we try to leave on vacation. And so we're trying to do everything to get that young crew better so that that young crew can go on vacation because we can't leave one of us behind. We all have to hang out together. So you know, we wouldn't do that anyway. But anyway, so that's why they're not all here. Also, we are coming up on uh, the fifth Sunday service project is at the end of this month. And the young crew will be back for that and will be helping out with that. But um, there's a sign up sheet in the back to sign up for different elements of that. And so this is awesome. You guys are le taking lead on this. The, the sign up sheet's coming together, all this. But it's going to be uh, it's an idea that you had. So it's worship in the park along with feeding folks that are in the park at the same time. So. Uh, yep, for the homeless folks there. So um, uh, you guys are working on this this week or this month. You guys all coming together. Great. We have a, we have a wonderful lineup of people that are going to be speaking uh, to you over the next couple of Sundays. And it's going to be awesome. All right. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to announce along the way. But I think that's pretty much it. Fifth Sunday. And we're the young crew is gone until fifth Sunday. And we're back for that. All right. So let's worship now by the giving of our offerings. Sun was beating down inside. The walls were storm and raised the wire. As we made our way across the prison yard, I felt my heart begin to race as we drew nearer to this place where they say that death is waiting in the dark. The slamming doors of iron echoed through the halls. Where the spell holds life within its cruel claws. Then I met a man whose face seemed so strangely out of place. A blinding light of hope was shining in his eyes. And with repentance in his voice, he told me of his tragic choice. He led him to this place. Where well, he must pay the price Then his voice grew strong As he began to tell About the one he said Had rescued him from hell He said I'm free yeah, yeah. I have been forgiven God's love has taken off my chains Given me these wings And I'm free Can take away from me because I'm free. Jesus set me free. We said a prayer, said goodbye. And tears began to fill my eyes. 
As I step back out into the blinding sun And even as I drove away I felt that I could not escape The way he spoke of what the grace of God had done Thought about her sin had sentenced us to die How God gave his own, his son, so you and I Could say we're free, yeah, yeah Now I have been forgiven God's love has taken off my chains And given me these wings And I'm free, yeah, yeah Are you free? And if the sun has set you free, oh, if the sun has set you free, then you are free indeed. Oh, you are really free. And if the sun has set you free, oh, if the sun has set you free, then you are free, really, really free. God's grace is broken, never changed, given us these wings, and we're free, yeah, yeah, and the freedom we've been given, so from that not even death, protecting you and me, so from that not even death, can take away from me, so from that not even death, can take away from me. Because I'm free I am free and If the sun has set you free Then you are really free indeed and If the sun has set you free You are really free indeed and If the sun has set you free you are really free indeed Almighty God, we thank you that we are indeed free through Jesus Christ your son who has set us free. God, we thank you that we are free from chains of addiction. We thank you that we are freed from chains of depression. We thank you that we are freed from our past sins. We thank you that we're freed from all the shame and all the things that are in our past that are all back behind us. God, we thank you that we are free to live a new life going forward. We're freed to love. We're freed to embrace. We're freed to be the person that you have called us to be. We're freed to walk in the purpose that you have for our life. God, we thank you for that. Lord, but as we thank you for it, we're also become mindful that there's many times that the things you freed us from, we tend to want to pick up off the floor and stick back on our wrists or pick up off the floor and put back on our ankles again because the, we, it's how we're, we're so used to it. It seems odd, and the, the breeze across those fresh places can seem unnerving or too exposing. And Father, we ask for your forgiveness when we pick up the things that you freed us from, when we return to the things that, that you would have us live out of and that you would have us come and, be, and, and have new life from. And Lord, we ask your forgiveness for that. We confess that we do it. And Lord, we thank you that you free us yet again. And Lord, as you've released us from these things and as we're free from these things, teach us to fly in you. Teach us to dance in you. Teach us to smile in you. Lord, help us to come alive in you. Father, this week we thank you for those who have been freed from illness. We thank you for good reports of can being cancer-free. We thank you for that miracle. We thank you that how you have worked in cell by cell in one of your beloved children's bodies to bring her to full health. Lord, we thank you how you work in the lives of those around us. There are those that are still struggling and still stepping forward in this and still looking at the mountain and saying, Christ, I believe in you that you will move this. And so, Lord, with the, enough faith to bring them to you, Lord, we lift them before you now. That mustard seed of faith to name them before you. That mustard seed of faith to lay them into your care. And Lord, in this space, 
we place them into your hands. We thank you that you're hearing our prayer. Father, we thank you for bones being mended. Father, we thank you for, he for fevers being broken. Father, we thank you for cancers shrinking, tumors disappearing, and for cells being reordered properly. Father, we thank you for lungs being opened and freed and congestion being gone. Father, we thank you for knees being strengthened for hearts being encouraged, for hope being restored, for minds being settled. Lord, we thank you for doors being opened and invitations for Jesus to come in and begin to walk in lives. Jesus, we thank you for nearly 18 years of ministry in this family and starting our third year here. And we thank you for all of your provision along the way, not just for this collective family, but for all of our families, how you meet every need. Jesus, thank you that you're with us now. We, God, we thank you that your very spirit is with us. And we ask that that spirit of yours would move among us, that would, our, would quicken our hearts and our ears, that we would feel you, that we would hear you. And Lord, as we prepare to leave this place, that we would go in service for you. And we thank you that you're doing all this around us. And we thank you for who you are. Amen. So we are up to, well, we've been talking about like the, the being the church and the priesthood of all believers and along these themes where Christ calls us and commissions us. And so our theme today is about being commissioned to do the work of Jesus. And we're going to start off here with this uh, passage. That you, if you've been in the church and you may have heard it called the Great Commission, but it's Matthew chapter 28. I don't know if I have them in the right order on the slides over there. I think I might have the you know, changing up calling audibles, making you move around. It's, you know, I'm going to be gone for three weeks, so I'm making you work harder on stuff. <laughs> what was that about being slayed by a look? What was that that you were saying? There? <laughs> so anyway, Matthew 28 is where we're going to start. And this is, Jesus has uh, been to the cross. He's been out of the grave. He's been seen by his followers. And now he's ascending into heaven, but he's giving them these marching orders along the way. And so Matthew 28, uh, starting at verse 18, he, as he's talking to them, to his, his disciples, those that follow him. And we have on verse 17 beforehand, just to put it in context, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. There's always a reality check in here. So there's people worshiping the risen Jesus and there's people who are doubting. But then we come to the quotes of Jesus. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And this is how Matthew wraps up. And I just want to lift up a couple of things here as we look at this, as we talk about the com being commissioned to do the work of Jesus, because I'm not the only one commissioned to do the work of Jesus. You are commissioned to do the work of Jesus. And, and folks that have been circulating through here and anyone that is a follower of Christ, these are the disciples. These are people that are following Jesus. They are being commissioned to do the work of Jesus. It's not that he just picked out a couple of people. You're commissioned to do it. And then all that would follow are commissioned as well. So as we look at this, let's unpack a couple of things here. All authority given to Jesus. Jesus is saying, all authority has been given to me. All, all. There's not some things that are missing. All authority has been given to him. Since he went to the cross, conquered death, came out of the grave, all authority has been given to him. And now as he's commissioning his followers, as he's commissioning his disciples, he's bestowing that authority upon them. 
Now, it's not that we're little gods walking around saying, I have the authority of God to go do this, and I'm my own little God, and I do it all. No, we're doing it through the authority of Christ. As we go out and as we're told to pray in the name of Jesus, or as we look in Acts and so on, as the disciples go out and say, be healed in the name of Jesus, or silver and gold I don't have, but they pull them up and say, stand in the name of Jesus. Whenever they go around and, and talk about this, what they're saying in the name of Jesus is name meant authority. So like in the name of Herod, or in the name of the court, or in the name of this, in the authority of Jesus bestowed upon me by the commissioning, I say to you, be healed. I say to you, have a calm mind. I say to you, be delivered and be free from spiritual oppression. I say to you, walk. I say to you this. So it's that authority, when they say in the name of, it's in the authority of, and it's not our authority, but it's authority that's been bestowed upon us by the commissioning that has happened here. And you are commissioned with that authority, and you have that authority to live in it, to walk in it, to pray in it, and to be able to impact the people around you with it. You've been given that authority. You've been deputized by Jesus. All right? So what, that's what that means for us. But now there's something about it. It's like, oh, yay, I love this accolade. I have the Jesus badge. Jesus has been giving me the authority. You walk around and say, Jesus badge. Jesus badge. This gets me into other churches. Jesus badge. I get to go into the Holy of Holies. Jesus badge. Oh, Holy of Holies. Here I am. We're supposed to do something with it rather than just think it gives us more access to the Father, which it does. But there's, some, there's another thing, and Jesus goes with this and says, okay, there's mysteries that you're going to know, and there's a, a deeper relationship with the Father that you're going to know. And when the Father sends his own spirit upon you, that's holy, Holy Spirit. When he sends that upon you, and we're on the other side of Pentecost, when that Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're going you're gonna to be empowered and comforted and strengthened and challenged in ways that you haven't even known yet. But now we know that because we're on the other side. But he's talking to them saying, since this is the case, since all authority has been given to me, now you go. Not go back in closer to me in the temple, not go come and come closer to me some other Go out and take that authority. Go in that authority to impact your realm of influence around you. So go. Go into your home. Go. Go into your workplace. Go into your community. Go to these different places and make disciples. So now Jesus is commissioning them with his authority to go, his disciples to go make other disciples. Go replicate disciples of Jesus. Don't repl replicate disciples of yourself. Replicate disciples of Jesus. And how do you do that? It's teaching them to obey Jesus' commands. Now, so the disciples are commissioned and given the authority to go and teach Jesus' commands and teach obedience to those commands. Obedience to Jesus' commands is not a popular theme. It wasn't then. It isn't now. But it's through obedience we sing about freedom and being free indeed. It's whenever you, we learn to be obedient to Christ, when we learn what's in here, and this is why we need to teach this to our children, because they can begin to obey what's in here earlier and miss a lot of the pitfalls that we went into and miss a lot of the things where we spiraled, and they can miss it because they'll hear it sooner, and they'll test it sooner, and they'll learn that there is value to obedience to the Scriptures because it'll save you from a whole lot of heartache. You'll still have a whole lot of challenges. You're still going to have a whole lot of mountains, but it can save you from a whole lot of other mess. And the sooner we learn to be obedient to what's taught here, the sooner we'll have a life of freedom and victory in the midst of the trials and tribulations that are this world anyway. But we're taught to go do this. We're commissioned to go do this. Go make disciples. Go make a follower of Christ. Go make these folks by doing it. We do it by living it out in front of them. We do it by speaking to them. We do it by teaching to obey what's in here. We can do it by sharing our stories of how, yeah, I didn't obey this because I thought... I, could, I knew better, or I was learning from textbooks and culture and this that countered this, and I said, well, let me apply this instead of this because I've heard this my whole life. This looks like a new thing to try out. I tried it out. It wrecked me, and so I went back to this, and my life came back together again. I've got that story on multiple fronts. If you have that story, that story can really, if, if someone will embrace wisdom, that can help them by hearing that, and that's part of the way that we make a disciple. Because remember, Jesus' disciples that were walking, following him had all kinds of failures, and they were learning from them. You're going to, you're, you have all kinds of failures, and you're going to have other ones. I have all kinds of failures, and I'm going to have more. Sometimes I think I rush into it. Well, if you never try anything, you never, never knew it ever happens, right? But you learn from it, and as long as you stay obedient to what the Scriptures are teaching, you have 
a framework around you to help you. And what is, this seems all overwhelming. It can seem very, very, uh, I mean, the weight of it. And if you have a sense of the weight of it and, and the, the, the hugeness of it, and it, you're in a good spot because it is. But here is something else that Jesus promised in this same passage. He says, I am with you even to the end of the age. So as you do this, as I do this, as we do this, as we go out in the authority of Jesus that he's bestowed upon us by the commissioning to go and make disciples of other people with all our ups and downs, struggles, challenges, mountains, and everything else as we go working through it, teaching people to obey and dealing with all the issues that come from, from holding to that and preaching that and teaching that, Jesus is with us as we do it. He's with you. He doesn't say, go do this, and now I'm leaving you. He doesn't say, uh, okay, run out, and he's leading from the rear. He led from the front. He went to the cross. He went to the grave. He overcame both. And he's going ahead of you to prepare the, the people that you're going to connect with. He's preparing already people ready for, to be disciples. And he is with you as you walk through it. He hasn't left you. Now, there may be times where it feels like he's not there. There certainly will. But as you talk with him and you ask with him, and now you're in good company with the psalmist. Because the psalms, a lot of them are, where are you, God? I cry out to you by day. Where are you? I cry out to you by night. Where are you? But if you will read the psalms in order, here's, there's, a, there's a sense to them. If you start at Psalm 1 and make your way to 150, there's, where are you? Oh, here you are. Where are you? I'll remember where you were before. Oh, wait, now you showed up. And then it just kind of keeps going through here. And you have the human condition played out through Psalms all the way through. And it's an amazing thing to see that there's actually a continuity to these things, the way they go. But Jesus is with you as you do this. Now, that's uh, <clears throat> in good form. You know, have you ever watched a movie where they give you kind of the end, and then they rewind back, and let's go back and flashback to everything here. And the bulk of the movie is the middle, like the flashback, and then let's go back to the end again. Well, come with me, if you will, a couple, maybe a year back, or we're going to journey back a little bit. And I'm, I'm pulling Luke's account of this, so it's Luke 10 that I'm going to. But prior to the cross, prior to all of this, ooh, that's quite a buzz we picked up right here. We have... Uh, in Luke chapter 10, Jesus is sending out the 72. There's 72 followers, so we don't just have the 12 disciples. We have 72 people who are following Jesus. And in this, he, he sits with them and he says, okay, I'm going to give you on-the-job training. And what I'm going to do is you're going to go ahead of me into these different places where I'm about to go. And you're going to go and preach the message to people. And they're, it's like you've watched me do it. You've watched what happens. Now I'm bestowing my authority on you and I'm sending you out to go out and go do this with specific instructions on what to do. And so the 72 head on out because Jesus told them to go do it and so they decided they were going to go do it. And so chapter 10, starting at verse 1, after the Lord, after the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go, he told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. Now, when you enter a house, first say peace to this house. If the head of the house loves peace, your peace will rest on that house. If not, it will return to you. And stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you. For workers deserve their wages. Do not move around from house to house. And when you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. And he goes on to talk about, woe to you, Chorus, and he's naming some towns. Woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it'll be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted up to the skies? No, you'll go down to the depths. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. We're going to stop there. 
on that part of it. And actually, uh, our first Sunday in August, we're going to pick up the rest of the story when 72 come back. But as we look at this, the, what are some things that come out of this story? And Jesus is giving some, some real-life situations if we, that they were dealing with then. There's going to be people who are going to be against you. There's going to be people who are going to be for you. Watch out for what's going on around you and all of this. But as you go out, there's some things that get lifted out of the story. And you may have heard it before as you've heard the story preached before. But one is the harvest is plentiful. Was the harvest just plentiful back in Jesus' day? Was it just plentiful back then? You're like, look around, the fields are, are white for harvest. We sang about it. Look around. Now, is it, have they all been picked clean? Has everyone that's going to become a disciple of Jesus become a disciple of Jesus, and now we're at a point where, oh, well, let's look around here. All I see is bare ground and stalks everywhere. Maybe we'll do a little bit of gleaning on the edges. Oh, there's one believer. Oh, there's another one saved. Oh, man, this slim pickings around here. They might have felt that same way then, too, but he, Jesus is looking around saying, the harvest is plentiful. They're everywhere. Go out into it. But unless you walk into the field, you're not going to see it. Go there. And he sends them by two because you can, you can get really discouraged with one. But two, you can share as you go. go one person has the other person's back. One can encourage another person. There's actually proverbs about one lifting up another as we go through life's journey together instead of trying to do it solo. But as they go through, the harvest is plentiful. What is the harvest? The harvest is people that are ready to receive Christ. The harvest is people that are ready for the message. The harvest is people who are ready to say, this world is failing me. I've tried it out. It's not going where it's supposed to go, and I need an alternative. I'm ready for an alternative lifestyle to what the world is, t- the world is telling me to live. Christianity was the original alternative lifestyle, folks. I'm looking for a different way to live. What is the harvest? People. People. People knit together by God himself in their mother's womb, and they came into this world one way or another. They were parented one way or another. Circumstances in life have happened to them one way or another. They have their own journey, their own scars, their own filters, all the old things that make somebody up just like you're made up. And they come there, and they're sitting there looking for something different, and you're the one that's being sent to them to go share it with them. And they go, where have you been? They may have heard it a hundred times, but when the time's right, when the harvest is ready, where have you been? So go out into it. Now, who are the workers? You're the workers. I'm the workers. We're the ones who are to go. But Jesus put something in here and says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. It could have been there when it was like, uh, there were 72. And there's only 72. They're really few. But there's a lot. There's should be a huge workforce right now, but I think there's a problem with trying to get the workforce to go out into the harvest field. Is there any other problems with people trying to get out in the workforce? Sometimes it's a lot more simple. Is it at home on the couch? Or social media posts about Jesus might be a little bit easier. If you give me an amen, pass it on, you know, share. I bet 500 people won't share this, but if you believe this, it's like, oh, look, I did my evangelism for the day. And there's someone sitting on the corner going, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the next sunrise because everything is falling apart. Or there's someone in your living room who's thinking the same thing. A harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So as you go into the harvest field, and you'll realize this, as you go into the harvest field and go, this is overwhelming. There is so much stuff out here. And, And I need more people out here. And this is where Jesus is bringing in the reality. Pray that more will go. So if there's anywhere that you can ever pray in full agreement with Christ, there's two things for sure that you can. One, that people be saved. And two, that more people go out into the harvest field and go work and join in and engage with what's going on around them as you're engaging. Now, here's, here's the rub on this, though, right? Because if we... If we knew that every person we talked to about Jesus would say yes, would it make it easier to go out and talk to them about Jesus? It's like, I have this miracle thing, and it'll change your life and totally turn your life around. And, and you go and share, you want to go share it with people, and if you knew they would say yes, it's like, well, yes, I'm going to tell everybody, because they're all going to say yes. This is going to be amazing. But the, the reality of it is, is that as we look at this, some are going to accept it, and some are going to reject it. There's going to be whole communities that will accept it, as Jesus is talking to the 72, and others that will say, oh, there's, no, this isn't what we want. There, as you engage, as you go into the harvest field, as you're out there working, and you see someone ripe for harvest, and you're going to share with them about Jesus, and then they're going to turn around and reject it. 
And it's that fear of rejection, I think, that freezes a lot of us. I know it's what gives me second thought about stuff. And I have to sit there and just kind of wrap myself up. Rejection or no rejection, you're hearing about Jesus. And I'm going to go out and talk to people about it and see what happens. And just let the chips fall where they go. Fortunately, someone did that for me. That's what we need to do. But we're scared of being rejected. Now, I would say, you know, there's a salesman adage. Came out of the background of sales and different things. But it's like, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting the product. Not true with this, if you've done this. Because you can share Jesus with people, and the rejection of you can come right along with it because, oh, you're one of those Jesus people, and I'm not going to talk to you, and you're not going to invite it to any more parties, and we don't, we don't want to sit around you or anything like this. And, we, and it is true and it is real that you risk this when you go share it. I want to tell you that from the front. I'm not going to play it down. Like You're not going to get personally rejected by this. They're just rejecting Jesus. No, they may personally reject you and want nothing to do with you. Isn't that encouraging? But Jesus is with you in it. And, I don't know, have you ever done this? Eavesdropped on somebody else's conversation. No, no one's going to. We're going to have a confession moment. Whoever listened to somebody else's conversation. Maybe the harvest isn't the one you spoke to, but the one sitting over here within earshot who's too timid, too scared, or otherwise to try to connect. But if you will risk rejection with this one, this one will hear it, and somewhere there will be a connection, and the soul will be saved. But it's, it's serious business. It's hard work. Harvesting is hard work. It's hard work. But Jesus is with you in all of it, and he's with you all through it, and you are commissioned to go do it, and it's amazing as it happens. Man, because this is one of the cool things about church, is there's two people working together, or three people, or four people. Sometimes, I guess, in Surfside's history, there's been about two. Usually when a tropical storm runs in. I've never had one, right? But we've had, we've been down, I think my small, the smallest congregation we've ever had has been two or three. But you know, where two or three are gathered, Jesus is there also. Right? But this is why we come together, because we can support each other, and we know what's going on as we walk through all this, and then we can, can be a team together to take on the other stuff that's going on and as we go to embrace people. But back to Matthew 28, 18 through 20, as we go back to this part here on the other side of the cross, the other side of the resurrection, for us, the other side of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit being poured out upon us, you are a follower of Jesus. You are a disciple of Jesus. You are commissioned in this passage. Jesus is commissioning you to do it. There, there's, there are great things planned as you go. And we'll just kind of put it into this month, as you go this month. right? As you are the church. There's going to be, you guys, we already have folks leading Sunday worship. We have folks who are going to share their stories. You get to hear other stories besides me. That's amazing. I want to record this so I can watch it later, but I've said we weren't recording it so no one goes, ah! <laughs> You'll just have to read your notes afterwards, see what it is. But you have wonderful people that are, step, that are going to lead on Sunday. They're going to plan, put their stories out. You have the wonderful things here being in the church with the Fifth Sunday Service Project. As you go out and planning it, sign-up sheets are together, far more organized than I am about any of it. You guys are getting organized to go do this. It's amazing. And the ministries that happen in everyday life that happens whenever you're living Jesus in front of other people, you're doing it. So this July, as you go out with your commissioning, as you go do this, remember that Jesus has all the authority. Jesus has all the authority, and he has commissioned you with that authority. So go and make disciples. As a follower of Jesus, go and make other followers of Jesus, and teach them to obey Jesus, one step at a time. Teach them to obey Jesus. The harvest is plentiful. It's all around us. The workers are few, but pray for more as you work in the field. And Jesus is with you as you do this. As you do it. Let's pray together. 
Lord, thank you that you call your disciples out to go and make more disciples. Thank you that we are on this side of the victory of the cross and of the pouring out of the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that in that commissioning, you don't leave us as orphans. You don't leave us to our own devices to try to figure out how to go do it all. But you actually guide us by your Holy Spirit. You actually nudge our hearts and you open our eyes to see the harvest around us. You guide us and you push us to say, go and talk with this person. Go sit by this person. Go and listen to what this person has to say. God, you move us in prayer whenever names come into our mind and we don't even know why that person's been called up to our attention. But God, we are learning to say prayers for that person at the moment that you bring them into our mind because we don't know what the need is, but you do and you're calling on your people to lift them up in prayer. God, we thank you for your spirit poured out upon us to, to, to release us out into our homes, out into our schools, out into our workplaces, out into the places where we play music, out into the places where we are working in circles and we're moving around with other people so that we can share Jesus. Father, I ask now that I just ask that your commissioning would fall on all of us. We, we may have, have never embraced the fact that we're someone who's commissioned. We may have never embraced the fact that the authority of Jesus, Jesus, the whole authority that is yours, you've, been, you've poured it out upon us. And so that we can go and pray in the authority of Jesus. We can go uh, serve in the name of Jesus. We can push back the dark in the name of Jesus. And so, Holy Son, Jesus Christ, I pray that as you pour out your presence upon all of us here and all of us who listen, Lord, that you would commission us each. Commission us by the outpouring of your Father's Spirit upon us. And Lord, may we walk in the authority that you walk in. May we pray with the same authority that you pray with. May we love and serve with the same authority that you have. And Lord, in that, in that authority, we pray for the harvest. Pray that they would come home to you. Father, we pray for more workers in the harvest field and pray, God, that you would prick their hearts and stir their souls and commission them and they would embrace the commissioning that you're pouring out upon them, that they would go and work in the field. And Father, in all this, we thank you that you are with us until we see you face to face. And guess what? You're still with us because now we're with you. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for all that you've done. And thank you for all of who you are. Amen.
for all who were thirsty. Dip your heart in the stream of life Let the pain and the sorrow Be washed away In the waves of His mercy As the deep cries out to deep We sing song and you feel in your heart that there's something missing in your life and you you need you need that special spot and that hole in your heart filled up think about the words of that song and uh give him an opportunity give him an opportunity to, to sit there and watch what he'll do just give him half a chance watch what he'll do in your life we're going to do one more song for you but if you have any, if you have any doubts, if you have any, any thought that you know, this is something that I really need to wrap my head around. I need to, I need to grasp a hold of this, and figure this thing out. There's a number on our website to the church, and you are more than welcome to call that phone number, and somebody will always answer that phone, and we will always talk to you, and we'll help you through anything. We'll help you move your mountain because that's what we do. And um, as a Christian, you'll help other people move mountains too. That's a promise. We're going to do one last song for you. And uh, think about this. If you, need, if you need some advice and help, pick up that phone. Call this phone number. Let us be that ve vehicle that helps you.
find rest my soul in Christ Jesus, we praise your name. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your love pouring down. We thank you for your miracles of grace and healing. I pray that each one of us present today and those listening online will feel the commission, will step into the commission that you have in our lives, and that we will go out into those fields and assist with the harvest. We thank you, God, for giving us this opportunity to serve you, and I pray that all of us will go out with boldness and with uh, with your spirit in our hearts. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. When the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar.